Hey guys, and welcome back to another video in the 12 days of Christmas. Today I'm doing a crochet video. I started crocheting in April of this year, and it was kind of on my list to learn how to knit this year, but then I started to learn how to crochet as well. I feel like I've learned so much in the past year, and everything that I learned was pretty much from watching people on YouTube. I thought I would share them with you, plus it's a good way for me as well because I've learned so many stitches that I sometimes forget how to do them or how to start them. So it's gonna be a reference video for, for me as well. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoy this one and let's just go ahead and get started. So the first stitch that I'm gonna show you guys is just a simple single crochet. I'm using an eight millimeter crochet hook and size six yarn. I just start by creating a slip knot. Cause this is the first one I'm gonna show you guys. I'll just show you how I create the chain. I hold the, the end yarn with my thumb and my middle finger and kind of my fourth finger as well. And then I loop the working yarn around my index finger like that. And then I will wrap the yarn, the working yarn around my crochet hook and pull it through that first loop. So that will create the first chain. I'm gonna create 12 chains. So after you do the 12 chains, it should look something like this, which is kind of like a nice braid. And then I always do one more chain. So like 12 plus one to start the next row. And then I will pull that chain that we just created to the other side. You always wanna work right to left, so the opposite of how you write English. So then to create the single crochet, you want to go in through the first loop, which is right here. So it's not the loop that the needle and the yarn is currently going through, it's the one right next to it, so the 12th loop. So if you were to count from this end all the way across, it would be number 12. You're gonna stick your hook through that first loop, and then you are going to pull the yarn, the working yarn, through that first loop. So then you end up with two loops on your crochet hook. You're going to pull the working yarn through both of those loops. Again, you go through the, the first loop of the chain or the next loop of the chain. You stick your needle through that loop. Then you pull the working yarn through. You end up with two loops on your crochet hook. You grab the working yarn and you pull it through. So you're gonna do that right until the end of the row, and then I'll show you guys how to start the next row. I'm about to finish off this first row, so I have one loop left to go through. I'm going to put my needle through that, pull the working yarn through the loop, two chains on it, pull the working yarn again through both of those. So now you've completed the entire strip all the way across. So to start the next row, you're going to just do another chain one. If you look at what we've created, you see there's kind of like these V's like on the top. That is one loop. So there's a hole under those V's and you wanna go through that. So you're gonna take your needle and go through the first hole, pull the working yarn through it, and then chain through both of those. So again, you find you kind of pull it a bit and you can find the, the hole and then you're gonna go through that with pull the working yarn and then pull through both. And then you'll do that for the entire row across and that's your second row. Finish off this row, you've got one more chain to go through. So you're gonna go through that last loop, create the last single crochet and then to start the next row, chain one, flip, your work over and you're gonna go and do the third row. So I'm just gonna finish this swatch and then I will show you guys what it looks like with a couple more rows and yeah, that's the single crochet. Okay, so this is the single crochet completed. The negatives to this is that it eats up a ton of yarn. Whatever you're making is gonna be a little bit stiffer because of just how tight the stitches are, but it is really beautiful and I think it does make a really nice blanket. The next stitch that I wanna show you guys is the waistcoat stitch. So I already have the chain created, like the initial row. I did 12 again. I'm just gonna do 13 to start the next row. And you're basically going to do the same thing we did for the previous single crochet. This pattern always starts with one row of single crochets. And then to start the next row, I chain one 
flip the yarn over and then now instead of going into this first loop you have the first loop that we would go in if we were doing a single crochet you're actually going to go in through this kind of like the pillar between the single crochet loop so it's like this kind of v shape it's a bit tricky but you want to wiggle your hook through those little upside down v's like little triangles i guess and then just pull your yarn through same thing as you would do a single crochet you want to get into that first like pillar between so the easiest way to think about it is do a single crochet but instead of going through the holes go through the pillars in between the holes so i'm going to do that for the entire row and again it's like a one row repeat pattern there's nothing really special that creates the last stitch in the row and then chain one flip your yarn all the way over and then you're going to work on the next row for the second row again you want to go through the little upside down triangles or not they're upside down v's but they're regular looking triangles and then continue to create these stitches all the way across kind of hard to see the last like stitch when you're creating these i actually don't even think think it exists so i kind of could just go through the last single crochet and pull up that way it doesn't really matter because at the end for me at least and then i will chain one flip my yarn and keep going across so this is what the waistcoat stitch looks like i just completed about the same number of rows as i did for the single crochet and as you can tell it is a really dense like there's like hardly any give to this it's super dense it's a really pretty pattern like i do really like it it was one of the first ones that i learned okay so moving on to the half double crochet sometimes when i do this one i do a row of single crochets sometimes i don't i think right now i'm not going to but you definitely can i'm actually going to grab the yarn first so you basically will loop your needle hook it over the yarn and then take that yarn through that first loop and then once you're through that first loop you're going to grab the working yarn again and pull through so at this point you should have three loops instead of two on your hook and then you're going to pull the yarn through all three of those loops it's like just an extra step instead of doing a single crochet you have to grab the yarn first hook it around your crochet hook put it through the loop and then pull through all three loops so then when you get to the end you're going to just finish off that last loop pull through all three and then you just chain one and then you're going to flip your yarn and we're going to do the exact same thing you're going to grab the yarn put it through so that you have three hooks oh my god three loops on your hook and then pull the working yarn through both of those i'm just finishing off this second row here and then you always have to remember to chain one before you flip and start the next row so i'm just going to continue to do maybe two more rows and then i'll show you guys the finished product this is the half double crochet it works up really really fast it creates this kind of bulkier taller stitch like the rows you can see are a lot higher than the single crochet but i really love 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 this pattern it has more stretch to it it is a little less dense so that you're going to get the holes but i actually don't mind that for this particular stitch okay so this next one that i'm going to do is my i think it's my favorite stitch that i've learned well one of my favorites definitely top three it's the herringbone half double crochet so i have again a chain of 12 and i'm going to start this stitch by doing a row of single crochets and then instead of chaining one on the end i'm actually going to chain two so like we normally do we just chain one but then i'm going to do a second chain so you chain two flip your work around whenever you chain two kind of my rule is never go into the first hole like we normally do like don't go into that first hole go into the second hole so whenever you have two chains go into the second hole and what you do before kind of like the half double you're going to wrap your yarn around your hook before you go into that second loop and then pull your yarn through but instead of going through all three loops that we created like in the half double you're just going to pull that first loop on your hook underneath and through the the second loop on your hook so i'll show you guys that one more time because i feel like that could be confusing so wrap your yarn around your hook put it into the second loop 
pull through and instead of going through all three loops that we have on our needle we're going to just go under that second loop and then you're going to pull through both of those wrap your yarn around your hook into the loop pull through and then pull your first loop under the second loop and then you have two left on your hook you're going to pull the working yarn through both of those and then to finish off you just do the same idea create that last one pull through and then you always at the end of the herringbone half double you want to chain two before flipping your work so i just wanted to show you guys the final stitch on this row because it's the chain of two so you kind of have to go in through the top of the chain two it's kind of hard to find i struggle a lot going through my double crochet like the chain twos but you got to go through that first loop and then you're fine and then again you're on a chain two flip your work such a beautiful stitch and you can probably tell why it's my favorite it's so stunning and unique and i really like it so i'll be right back okay so this is the herringbone half double crochet stitch i just I love this one so much. I think it's so beautiful. It's like similar but different to the half double crochet. And again, it has a really good stretch to it. So it's more comfortable if you're making something like a sweater or a blanket. It's not quite as stiff. We are doing the double crochet now. It's actually one that I don't use as often because I really don't like it that much, but it is a really classic stitch. So I thought I would show you guys. So I think what I want to do for the double is do a row of singles first. So I just finished a row of singles. A single crochets similar to when we did the half herringbone half double I'm going to chain two chain two flip my work over and then again anytime you chain two just like the rule that I follow is def don't go into the first hole go into the second hole so I'm going to wrap my yarn around go through the second loop and then pull the working yarn through it so you should end up with three loops on your hook and then I'm going to grab the working yarn but instead of pulling all the way through all three like we did for the half double I'm just going to pull through the first two so then you end up with still two loops on your chain and then basically what you're going to do grab the working yarn and pull through both of those as well so I'll just reverse and show you guys that again grab your working yarn go through the second loop from the end pull through, wrap your crochet hook around your working yarn again, pull through the first two loops on your hook, grab your working yarn and pull through the second two. Creates a much taller stitch, which you guys will see. Um, the reason I don't like the double crochet as much is just because it is kind of like loose and I find that it's quite holy and it almost gives me, I don't know, like grandma sweater vibes, which I don't mind. Like I do like grandma sweaters, but it almost feels like you're wearing like a doily or something. I don't know how to describe it, but I don't like the double crochet pattern as much. I'm gonna just finish off this first row. So there's one loop left. So I'm gonna grab my yarn, pull through, pull through those first two loops, pull through those second two. So I'm going to chain two, flip my work, and then we're gonna do the same thing. So you're not gonna go through the first loop you're going to go through this one right here which is the second one and pull through the first two pull through the second two repeat this all the way until the end of the row I just realized i wanted to show you guys at the end of the second row you have to again go through the chain the top of the chain two so you see how there's like the chain two here so you have to go through the top of it which is I don't know I find it maybe I'm doing it wrong but I find it really difficult to get just through the top of the chain but that's what you gotta do so I just wanted to show you guys that so this is the double crochet again it's kind of just a classic crochet pattern this next um, stitch that I want to show you guys is going to be the moss stitch so I started I just don't want to repeat it again but I started with a chain of 12 chained one so I was on the 13th and then I did single crochets all the way across and that's how I start the moss stitch and then I'm going to chain one on the end to start the next row flip my work you're going to start with a single crochet in the first space in the first hole um, so single crochet and then what you're going to do is chain 
one. And then because you have that extra chain one, you're gonna skip the next hole and you're going to go into the next, so like the third from the end, the third loop. So single crochet into the third loop, chain one, you're gonna skip the fourth hole and you're gonna go into the fifth and single crochet, then you're gonna chain one. And you just always have to remember to chain one, skip one. So skip the next one, go into the one after that, chain one, skip, and go into the next single crochet, chain one, skip, single crochet. And then you only have, at the end of this, I did, again, I did 12. So at the end, I only have one more. Instead of doing like a chain one, I'm just going to leave it as a single, two single crochets here at the end. So then you're gonna chain one, flip your work, and you're gonna work on the second row. First and the second row are a bit different, so I'm gonna show you both. Do a single crochet into the first loop or the first hole, so single crochet, chain one, and then you want to skip and go into the next one. So the holes that you're working in are always a bit bigger, so I don't know if you can see, but like there's this one here, it's more crowded, like there's more going on in here. You want to always work in the spaces where the hole is a lot bigger. So if you kind of pull your yarn, you can tell that this is the bigger hole. So that's after you've chained one, you're gonna work a single crochet into that space, chain one, and then again, skip the smaller hole, go into the bigger one, single crochet, chain one, and you're gonna repeat this right to the end of this row. So then I'm going to, I only have two spaces left, so it's a single crochet, but because that we only have one more space left, similar to what we did in that first row, I'm just gonna do, I'm not gonna chain one, I'm just going to do another single crochet into the end. So then you're gonna chain one, Flip your work around, start the third row by going into the first loop, single crochet, chain one. So you can really tell because this is a lot tighter and this hole is a lot more spacious. Don't go into the skinny one, go into the fatter hole. Single crochet, chain one, skip, single crochet into the fatter hole, chain one, skip this little guy. Because we're at the end, you're just gonna do one single crochet and then another single crochet without chaining an extra one. So you can see the first row here was a single crochet. And again, if you don't want that border, you don't have to, you can just go straight into the moss stitch, but I just did it to make it easier. And this is what it looks like. So it's kind of a, another unique type of stitch. I actually really, really like this one. What I like about the moss stitch is that it's really stretchy. Like you can stretch this out. Um, not so much left and right, but up and down, you can really stretch this out. And then you can see the holes once you do. So it has a lot of give to it. The last stitch using the size six yarn is going to be the griddle stitch. This is probably my current favorite stitch. Like I know I said the herringbone half stitch is like my favorite. And then I would say the griddle stitch. I just love the way that this one looks. I just have a chain of 12. I'm actually gonna leave it at 12 and not do the 13th because I want it to end on a single crochet, which will make sense when we get started. So I just did a, a chain of 12. And the first thing I'm gonna do is in the first loop, I'm going to do a single crochet, like we've done so many of already, but just a single crochet into that first loop. And then in the second loop, I'm gonna do a double crochet. And then in the third one, I'm going to do a single crochet. And you're gonna alternate between doubles and singles all the way across. And it's really important just on this first row to keep track. The way you know you've done it right is if you end up with a single crochet at the end. In my last chain here, I wanna do a single crochet. To start the next row, I'm gonna actually chain three. So we've done like chain one, chain two, and this time we're gonna do chain three. So once you've chained three, flip your work around, and that chain three kind of counts as your double crochet. What you'll notice with this pattern is that you have kind of deeper chains or deeper holes and then shallower holes. You wanna skip that first loop and go into the second chain here. And it's the, it happens to be the shallower one. So when you're in the shallow chain, you need to do a single crochet. The other way you can remember to do single is that you have the chain three, which counts as a double, so then your next chain is a single. And after that, you're going to go in to the next 
hole, which is the deeper one, and you're gonna do a double crochet. So again, it's the same idea. It's single crochet into the shallow stitches and then a double crochet into the deeper, deeper ones. So you are going between single, doubles, single, doubles right until the end of the row. And the way you'll know if you've done this one correctly is if you end this row on a double crochet. Here's my last single, and then here is my double crochet. So we end this row on a double, and that's how you know you've done it correctly and you haven't um, lost track. So because we ended this one on a double, the next row is just gonna start with one chain only you're going to start with a single because if you can see the stitches here, the first one is a more shallow and this one's deeper. So in the shallow one, which happens to be the first stitch, you're gonna do a single crochet. So this row starts with single and then the next one is a double. And then a single stitch and then a double. And you're gonna repeat this right to the end of the row back and forth. And like I said, it starts becoming intuitive because you can tell which ones are deeper and which ones are more shallow. So this is that chain three that we created on the uh, second row there. You wanna do a single crochet into the top chain here. It's always kind of hard to find. I always have to use like both hands to really get under both of these chains but you wanna go into the top chain there like that and then pull a single crochet through that. I don't know why I find it so difficult to do. But there's your single crochet and now chain three, two, three. Flip your work and because this is the chain three, you're going to skip that first chain and do a single into the next one. So every time you have the chain three, it always starts with skipping a loop, going into the second one, which happens to be the shallow one, and doing a single crochet. And then it's just a repeat pattern. So double, single, double, single, all the way to the end. So this last chain here is going to be a double. So double crochet, and then to start the next row, because we ended on a double, we start it with a single, and we are going to go into the first loop with a single, and then double. So you just have to alternate back and forth and keep track of where you are with this pattern. Okay, so here is the griddle stitch. Again, it looks good from both sides of it. It does have a little bit of give to it as well. It's not super stiff or anything. And like I said, it doesn't have those holes, but it still drapes really nicely. This next stitch will be using size five yarn. My needle is a six millimeter needle. So I just created a chain of 14 because it's a smaller yarn, so I'm gonna do 14 and then I'm going to chain one more and this Stitch is called the mini bean stitch So what you want to do is with that chain of 14 that we created you want to go in to the third loop So not this one. This is one two you want to go into this third chain. So into that third chain, we're going to stick our needle as if we are doing a single crochet. And then you're going to pull the yarn through that so that you have two loops. But instead of completing the single crochet, you're going to grab your yarn again, like you're doing a double crochet this time, and you're going to insert it back into the same loop, pull the yarn through. So now you have four. If you can see that you have four chains on your hook. And then you're gonna grab the working yarn and pull it through all four. At the end of this, you always chain one. The next uh, step will be to skip the next chain because we did that extra chain one at the end. So you skip the next loop. You're gonna go into this loop as if you're doing a single crochet. So pull the working yarn through, then loop your needle around the working yarn again, insert it back into the same loop, pull through so that you end up with four on your hook grab the working yarn and pull through all four. These are creating those little beans that you'll see. So then chain one, skip the next chain, single crochet into the one after, grab your working yarn, go through the same loop, pull through. So you always have to have the four on your needle and then pull through all four. Then you're gonna chain one. So you're gonna complete this right to the end. We're in the last one now because we're skipping this chain and we're going into this one here. So again, single crochet, grab your yarn, go back in through it with the loop. You have four, pull through. And then at the end to start the next row, you're gonna chain two. 
and then you're gonna flip your yarn or your work around. To start the next row, um, you'll notice that you've got these beans. If you pull it a little bit, it has a bean and then it has this like open triangle hole. Then it has a bean and then to the left of the bean is that little triangle. So you always wanna be inserting into the triangles. So for this first one, we're gonna go in as if we're doing a single crochet, but we're gonna grab the working yarn again, go through, pull through, and you got the four loops on your hook and then take the working yarn through all four and then chain. So again, you have like the, the bean and then you have the triangle. So you wanna go into the triangle, which is always on the left of the bean. And that's where you're gonna create this like another bean. So it's like the next row has beans on the opposite stitch, I guess, so that it creates this crisscrossing style of a pattern. If you can't see it, you kind of have to pull it a bit, but you always will find the triangle on the left of the bean. So I'm gonna complete this for a couple more rows. It's really just a one, one line repeat pattern, so there's no extra steps. Just always remember to chain two before you start the next row. Okay, so this is the mini bean stitch. When I see it now, I'm like, oh, I really like this, this pattern. It is really, really cute. And it, it, again, it has a bit more give to it, kind of like the moss stitch. You can stretch it out a bit. It's a bit more elastic and then it has all the holes. Just not a fan of how quickly it eats up the, the yarn. Okay. So this next pattern that I'm going to show you is the basket weave stitch. So I started by doing a row of 17 loops. So you kind of have to think of this as you want multiples of three because we're doing the basket weave stitch with three and then you want um, to add two. So if you're doing 12, you're gonna do 14. Basically, because I wanted to do 15, so I ended up doing 17 chains. So what you're gonna do is create double crochets all the way through this first row, but you want to go in by starting in on the 14th loop or like the fourth loop from the from the needle. So you're gonna go one, two, three, four. Start by doing a double crochet into that fourth loop. And then you're just gonna do a double crochet into all of these loops right until the end of the row. You wanna end up with 15 double crochet posts, which I'll show you once I get to the end of this row. I'm gonna do one final double crochet into the last loop. And then as you can see, if you've done it right, you should have 15 posts or whoever many posts you have, as long as it's a multiple of three. So I wanna chain two, flip my work over, and now you're going to do front post double crochets. So it's basically the same as doing a double crochet, but you go around the original, like the first row of double crochet. So loop your yarn around your needle, go underneath this first double crochet. So you go like right under it. And then you're gonna pull the working yarn up and over it so that you have the three loops like a double crochet and then you do a regular double crochet. Again, you're gonna do double crochet, pull your yarn underneath that first post and then regular double crochet. So at this point, you should only do those two and now you're gonna do back post double crochets. It's basically the same thing, but you go in from the other side. So loop your working yarn around your needle. This is why this one's a bit more complicated. And instead of going underneath like we did before, you're gonna go in from the back side of your work. So you're gonna kind of, your needle should come out through the top and then you have to pull your working yarn underneath and through that. So you go in from the back side and then pull your working yarn through that. And you're gonna do this one three times. So the first chunk you only did tw uh, twice because the end counts as a row. This one you wanna do three times. So again, pull that working yarn around your hook, go in from the back end of your chain and then pull through. And you kind of gotta pull it a bit so it gets enough height and then it's a double crochet. So then the next three posts are gonna be front post double crochets. So you just go in from the front and create those double crochets and you're gonna do three of them. 
you always want to do three except for on the first two and the last two of the row. And then the next three are going to be back posts, which are always a bit harder, but you just have to go in from the back end and have your needle come around the back instead of the front. And then you have to do two front posts. This last chain, you actually are going to do a half double crochet. Grab your yarn, go through the first chain on the top of the chain two that we created, pull through so you have the three. And then if you remember from the half double, crochet, you want to grab your working yarn and pull through all three. And that's how you finish off that row with a half double. So then you're going to chain two. And it's basically the same pattern all the way across, but you do opposites. If the first two here are back posts, this time you're going to do front posts. And then these three that are front posts, this time you're going to do back posts. We're starting here with two front posts. And then these next three will be back posts. So again, you go in from the back end of your yarn, pull up and you do those three all back post. And then the next three will be all front post. And then again, the last one, you want to go in through the top of the chain two here with a double with a half double crochet. So you should have three loops and then pull through those and then chain two and you're going to start your next row. So you basically repeat that pattern. So this time, because these two here are back posts, we're going to do front posts. And then these three will be back posts, front posts. So you're just alternating across. Here is the basket weave stitch completed. So as you can see, it really does have that basket like effect, like one of those weaved baskets looks good from both sides and it's really cute actually. So I really want to do a full sweater using this pattern. So the final stitch is my favorite stitch that I've learned so far. It's the Alpine stitch. I've used it in a lot of my sweaters. I just did a row of 14 and then I did single crochets into each of those 14. So at the end to start the next row, I'm going to do a chain two and then flip my work. So this row, we're going to do double. So again, every time you do a chain two, you skip that first hole and then you go into the next uh, chain. So I'm going to do double crochets all the way through to the end of this row. So we're finishing off this row. I'm going to do the final double crochet and then I'm going to do a single crochet. I'm going to flip my work and I'm going to now do single crochets all the way across. So you can kind of see the double and then at the top of the double there's always these small holes which are where we do the single crochets. So you don't skip any you just do single crochets right across. At the end of this row where you have the chain two, make sure you do a single crochet on the top of the chain two. And now we're going to do chain two. Flip our work, but we're going to create the alpine now. So like the basket weave, we're going to do a double front post crochet or a front post double crochet, I guess. So grab your yarn and you're going to do a double crochet around this first post. So go underneath that first double crochet, pull your yarn up, make sure you give it a good tug up so that you have enough height, do a double crochet through that. In the next double crochet, we're not going to do another front post double crochet. We're actually going to do a double crochet right above it. So you see how it has that single crochet above the double crochet. That's where we're going to do a double crochet. Then you're going to do another front post. So this is going to create that alpine stitch. So you're always going back and forth. This time it's going to be a double crochet in the single crochet above the original double crochet. And then it's a front post double crochet. So I'm just finishing off this row. And because it doesn't have actually another, we're not going to do a front post around this last crochet here. So I'm just going to do a double crochet into this chain at the top and then you're going to chain one and flip your work. This is the first stitch that does does have a backside that you don't want to show really. So that's why we're going to do a row of single crochets to get over the back side. I'm going to do single crochets in all of the chains on the top row here all the way across. Remember to do a single crochet into the top of the chain two as well and then do chain two, 
flip your work and now we're going to repeat that same pattern but on opposite stitches we started last time with a double crochet like a front post you'll notice that there's one right here and we're actually going to do a double crochet in the single stitch above so the same idea but this time you're starting with this the double crochet on the top and then you're going to do a front post around this double crochet so every time you do this you have to be alternating because that's what's going to create the like alpine so there's one here one here one here one here one here there's not just a whole strip of them so we just finished that last double crochet and i'm going to do one more double crochet in the top here to complete that row and that's what this the two rows look like and then i'm going to chain one flip my work and we're going to do another row of singles this is the alpine stitch completed really a beautiful stitch it's so much fun to create as well so those are all of the stitches that i've learned this year. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. Again, these are all very easy stitches that I think anyone can do. That sums up this video. Again, you can check out my Instagram account. It's stitched by Chris if you want to see any of the sweaters that I created. Thank you for watching another video in the 12 days of Christmas. Thank you for following along with the series. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos and I guess I will see you in tomorrow's.